In this lesson, we will learn about the description, composition, and minimum requirements for the appointment and training of cabin crew, plus the operator's responsibilities for the storage of records and documents. EU Ops defines a cabin crew member as a crew member other than a flight crew member who performs, in the interests of safety of passengers, duties assigned by the operator or the commander of the aeroplane. In order that passengers can identify a cabin crew member, the crew member must wear the appropriate company uniform. Each cabin crew member must successfully complete an approved initial course of basic training. Following the initial course, or before converting from one aeroplane to another, a conversion course is to be successfully completed. The training must include Aeroplane Type Specific Crew Resource Management, CRM, as defined in EU Ops, and an Operator's CRM course. To be appointed as a cabin crew member, a person must be at least 18 years of age, medically fit, and physically capable of discharging the duties specified in the operations manual. There are some requirements in EU Ops regarding the number and composition for cabin crew on an aeroplane. They are an aeroplane with a maximum approved seating of more than 19 with at least one passenger on board must have one cabin crew and for every 50 or fraction of 50 passenger seats on the same deck one cabin crew member is required or the number of cabin crew who actively participated in the aeroplane cabin during the relevant emergency evacuation demonstration or who were assumed to have taken part in the relevant analysis except that if the maximum approved passenger seating configuration is less than the number evacuated during the demonstration by at least 50 seats, the number of cabin crew may be reduced by one for every whole multiple of 50 seats by which the maximum approved passenger seating configuration falls below the certificated maximum capacity. To explain this, an example is on screen. In unforeseen circumstances, the number of cabin crew members may be reduced, provided that the corresponding number of passengers has been reduced, in accordance with procedures specified in the operations manual. In this case, the authority must be informed, and conversely, the authority can impose additional crew members. In aeroplanes where more than one cabin crew member is required, one member is to be appointed the senior cabin crew member, SCC. To be appointed as senior cabin crew, the crew member must have not less than one year's experience and must have successfully completed a training course including appropriate crew resource management CRM training. The senior cabin crew member SCC, is to be responsible to the commander for the conduct and coordination of normal and emergency procedures as specified in the operations manual. If a period of air turbulence is experienced in flight with no instruction from the flight deck, the SCC is entitled to suspend non-safety related activities and illuminate the fasten seatbelt sign. Operators are to ensure that each cabin crew member undergoes recurrent training covering the normal and emergency procedures and drills relevant to the type and variant of aeroplanes flown. The training is to be in accordance with EU Ops and must be approved by the authority. The period of validity is 12 months, with the three months rule applying. If a cabin crew member has been absent from flying for more than six months and still remains within the current training validity period, he must complete refresher training before returning to flying duties. If the crew member has not been absent for a period of six months, but has not flown on the type or variant in that time, they must undergo a refresher course or operate two re-familiarisation sectors. Cabin crew members 
are not normally permitted to operate on more than three aeroplane types. But exceptionally, the authority may approve operation on up to four types. The authority will impose conditions if approving four types, with the proviso that for at least two of the types, non-specific normal and emergency procedures are the same, and safety and type-specific normal and emergency procedures are similar. For this rule, the aeroplane variants considered to be different are listed on screen. Now that we have looked at the flight and cabin crew qualification and training, we will study the requirements for crew records and documentation storage periods. The operator is responsible for storing for specific periods all flight crew and cabin crew records in an acceptable form, accessible to the authority. In addition to keeping crew records, operators are also to ensure that all records and relevant operational technical information for each flight are stored in acceptable form, acceptable to the authority, for set periods. EU OPS lay down minimum periods that operators must store all documents and records. Students are required to have knowledge of the storage period, and although the list is rather long, fortunately the majority of storage periods are for three months. The required periods of storage are shown on screen, starting with information used for the preparation and execution of flights and continuing with reports, then flight crew records and finally cabin crew records. During this lesson, we have studied the EU OPS requirements for the composition, conversion, training and checking of flight and cabin crew. In addition, we have studied the operator's responsibility for keeping and storing relevant records and documents for minimum periods.